All right, good afternoon. It's Bobby Lee from Hurricane Creek Farms. Today, we're gonna get a little hay moved. As you can see there behind me, our haystack consists of all of one roll now. So, gotta get a little more hay moved. It's middle of January. We've actually hit a little bit of a dry spell. So, I take advantage of that. We can get in and out of the hay fields, get some hay loaded up, and move back in, hopefully get all that we're gonna need for the rest of winter just here over the next day or two. But anyway, um, as always, I ask you to hit the like and subscribe button. With that said, let's dive right in. All right, and so we got the tractor moved to the field just a little earlier. Got dad to pick me up, give me a ride back. So got the trailer hooked up, headed in there to get the hay. It's actually a little, little hay field. Uh, really right in the middle of town, actually. But I think there's 24 rolls there. We'll grab those. Um, shouldn't have any trouble getting them moved this afternoon. And then probably want to move about twice that many I figure we need between 50 and 60 to get us uh, through kind of the expected you know dates that we'll you know, need to be feeding hay but anyways we'll get that done and I don't know then kind of get it all stacked up Let's get her loaded. Like I say, we're right here in the middle of town. But I think a little four acre patch of hay. I see the last cut in the hay. It was a little short. I think it was just five rolls. I haven't even gotten them moved out of the field yet. But I think, say, 24 or so here. So we'll get all of them moved. They'll be, what, four and loads and four full loads and a part of an oat load. But we'll get them loaded up. Another trip. The heifer's right up here on the fence, checking things out. Yeah, as we look through the weeds there. Bunch of other cows working on polishing off a roll we put out a few days ago. Looks so like it's been a really nice afternoon. Sun won't shine, but it's, what, 43 degrees? So really mild. Looks so like just for a, once, it's just not, you know, ankle to knee deep mud everywhere, so. Nice day. If we were being really picky, we'd say, yeah, sun will poke out. Make it a absolutely fantastic Saturday afternoon. Meanwhile, I have a pretty lazy crew riding with me. Brittany, what you doing, girl? You won't even acknowledge me. Willis right there. Actually, a pretty good kind of chore for me to do while I'm on dad duty. I'm just in the truck the whole time. He can nap. It's kind of the one place that he'll consistently nap these days is when he's in a moving vehicle. All right, so we got those five loads of hay moved. Um, got done right here just before dark. Was catching up real quick on the evening chore. Saw something that didn't look quite right. And let's see if we can get over here and show you. Let's see, that girl's back in right there. Should not look quite like that. So, problem. Um, looks like got a little bit of a vaginal prolapse. So, uh, she didn't want to come up. She's a real gentle cow, as you can see. I'm gonna see if I can ease her up there into the barn lot with the others. Probably not gonna have time to, to address it this evening just because I'm supposed to be at my office in about 20 minutes to do evening rounds. And so time is just gonna allow, it should be okay until in the morning. Um, but we don't have any lights or anything out here at the barn, but go on baby, go on up a hill, go on up a hill. She'll see the gate. Go on, all your friends are in there. 
We'll see if we can cut the rest of them back. Just keep her up tonight. While we've got her caught, we can uh, get that replaced. First thing I'm going through the gate. Yeah, she knows something's up. Normally she's one of the better general cows. She's one of the cows. Uh, one of the, the first cows we bought when we started our cow herd. But yeah, not what that's supposed to look like. So I think in one of our very first videos we ever did, we replaced a, uh, a vaginal or uterine prolapse. Actually one that had just calved. Difference here is she's not due to calve for about another two months. So we'll get that replaced in the morning, see how things feel in there, hopefully. Everything's still good with the calf. Uh, you can tell she's obviously got a lot of Brahma influence. Um, their tracks are a little, um, I don't know, a lot, a lot of times a little more loose, a little, little more prone to doing this and, and getting into a prolapse. So, yeah, then the question becomes what do we do with her long term? All right, good morning. Fast forward about oh, 14 hours or so from where we left off last night. Um, got that cow. Caught right over there. See things still look about like they did last night. Thankfully, no worse. Plan to get that replaced. Um, looks to be a gorgeous day. Sun's shining, which is always a little bit of a welcome change this time of year. But gonna get that, get that replaced. Um, kind of talk you through what we're doing there, and then try to get back to moving some hay because I think we got rain moving in here in the next two or three days, and we're gonna slip back into a wet pattern. Probably won't have a, another chance where it's this dry again um, to get any hay moved. So we'll get her in the chute and get that thing fixed. Go on in there, girl. Go on in there. Go on. Go on. Good mama. Good mama. This is all going entirely too easy so far. So I expect things to go wrong at any moment. She was more than willing to go right into the chute. Let's see if we can get her head caught. All right, baby. Step up. Okay, yeah, it's scary how well this is going so far. So, expect for things to go wrong at any moment. All right, so I don't have an extra set of hands, but I think I got the camera set right there where you should be able to see everything. So right now, just working to kind of clean this up a bit. It is not going to be perfect, but get it as clean as we can. Before we replace it. And see if we can get everything back where it's supposed to be. All right, so now, just kind of making a, making a little bit of a fist. Mm -hmm. See if we can get it to kind of slowly work back in. May have underestimated a little bit how limitless it was. I'm gonna get a little sugar. See if we can draw some of that swelling out. Make it a little easier to go back in place. All right, and so yes, things just a little more swollen than what we're gonna be able to get replaced without doing this. So yeah, just sugar works as an osmotic to pull some of that fluid edema out and uh, make this thing a little smaller where we can hopefully replace it here in a few minutes. We'll pack this on here, let it sit for just a few minutes, start to work, come back and uh, see if we can get her in there. 
and I also got to remember to add sugar to the grocery list as a result of this. Yep, let that sit there and kind of go to work. You can kind of already maybe appreciate that fluid dripping off. But you know, we're gonna let it sit there for five or ten minutes and then come back and see if it'll it'll reduce. Giving that sugar several minutes to kind of go to work. See if we've gotten enough swelling out of it. Get her back in there. All right, I apologize. I think I missed the actual reduction of it. You can see it's back in place. Oh, uh, put a stitch in her. Make sure everything's straightened back out. A little tougher than I was despite or hoping it would be. Jimmy kind of called that when she was, she went to shoot too easy. Everything was going way too smoothly for it to continue that way. Um, all right. So now we're gonna place a stitch and get her turned back out. Okay, so now what we're gonna do Right here at the bottom of the vulva on each side, we're gonna make a little stab incision with the blade. Where we can pass our needle. Make one up here at the top as well. We can place the umbilical tape that serves our stitch. Set that down. Nice needle. That incision. All right, now that we've got our needle to exit up here, pass our umbilical tape through it. Pull it back down. Out there at the bottom. We're gonna basically repeat the same thing for the other side. All right, got it passed up the other side. Same thing with our tape. Get it threaded through there. And have our two ends. Set my needle down. So we can cinch that up tight. Be sure that prolapse doesn't pop right back out. So we just need it loose enough so she can pee. She's still, I'm thinking, at least a couple of months away from calving. Um, our earliest calving cows are still over a month away. And I don't think, based on last year's calving date, she should have been bred back enough to calve before even a couple of months from now. So we're going to turn her back out with the rest of the herd and watch her close, of course, for these next few days. All right, so you can see everything looks a lot more normal back there. A little swollen, a little bit of a mess on the rear end, but hopefully she'll be no worse for the wear. Come on, baby. Put her back out in the pasture with the rest of the cows and keep a close eye on her for a few days. Come on, girl. Help arrive just as we got done. All right, so now back to our regularly scheduled programming of moving a little hay. Got all this moved off this field yesterday afternoon. Now we're headed up the road to a little bigger farm, bigger field. Where we'll be getting um, all the rest that we'll need. It's actually a little closer to the house too, so. But talk a little more about that prolapse too. So that was a, a vaginal or a cervical prolapse. 
they're that type is a little more common late in gestation, you know, late in pregnancy. You know, just after calving, they can prolapse like that, uh, or even have an entire uterine prolapse. But the reality with that cow is that you know we probably you know she she is late in gestation. Let her have this calf. Good chance she'll prolapse after calving or when calving. And uh, then we probably, no, somebody's got something in the road here, we need to get rid of her because she's probably going to do it each subsequent year. The, uh, and so not, not worth dealing with that year in, year out. Um, two, if she does it after calving, that's going to interrupt her ability to, to get bred back quite as quickly. And just, yeah, we, we just don't want to deal with that every year, too. But got it replaced, um, kind of gave Dad a hard time. He shows up right as we get done. We, he has a real knack for being able to do that, which wasn't really his fault today. We, uh, I called him because it, it wasn't reducing as easily as I wanted it to. Of course, as soon as I get off the phone with him, um, you know, I, I get it back in. So I text him to tell him that, that I'd gotten it, but he was already um, on the way. He lives just right around the corner from us so but yeah give him a hard time about that but anyway now we're gonna get this hay moved and say it's nearly 11 o'clock now but we'll uh i don't know make six seven maybe eight trips that'll put us between 30 and 40 more rolls moved and that should be what we need for the rest of this year shouldn't shouldn't have any trouble getting that done as long as we don't run into any more complications So that'll probably just about wrap it up for this video. Got into a little bit of drone footage. Just got that a week or two ago. Still definitely figuring that thing out, learning how to use it and incorporate it in more of the video. So look, look for more of it in the future. Got the hay moved. Got the wild man there helping me. I haven't gotten it stacked yet, but uh, uh, we got about an hour before dark. Got a few more chores to do. Cows with all the commotion. I think they're about to get fed a little bit. We feed them in the morning and they still have plenty of hay out right now. But anyway, we appreciate you watching. Um, if you still are, we definitely appreciate that. Um, if you like what you're seeing, please give us that thumbs up.
click the subscribe button and as always y'all remember to eat beef and god bless next time what do you say god bless. there you go